Welcome to the video on Jenny Cam. As a user of digital machine vision cameras, you need to be aware of the power of Jenny Cam. And yet, you do not need to know the details of Jenny Cam to appreciate what it does for you. Let's start with a bit of history to see how Jenny Cam evolved. Early machine vision cameras were analog and had no programmability. If there was any configurability, it was performed with small switches and variable resistors inside the camera. Because the camera's signal was analog, a frame grabber was essential. Each model of frame grabber employed a different interface to the computer bus. The software needed to be written for a specific frame grabber, and this created barriers to changes and improvements. With the advent of digital cameras, cameras that had digital image data outputs, digital inputs were also possible. Cameras became programmable. These cameras had from a few to many dozen programmable features. To program a feature required addressing a specific register in the camera and then writing the data. Different cameras used different register addresses for similar parameters. Also, the data format and range were different from camera to camera. To use one of these cameras, the user needed to write custom software. Changing to a different camera required rewriting the software. Some software suppliers adopted the use of camera configuration files. When switching a camera, the software could remain the same, but the camera configuration file had to change. If the camera configuration file was wrong, the results were unpredictable. Along with the introduction of the Gigi camera interface, a better way to manage camera programmability was developed. This resulted in the Genicam specification. Genicam has two parts, a transport layer and a camera description file. The transport layer handles communication with the camera so that the application software does not need to know even what camera interface is being used. The camera description file contains all the information about the camera along with the specifics on how to program all of its features. This is part of an XML file. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. XML is very much like HTML used for websites on the Internet. The good news is you don't need to know much about the details. A little knowledge will help you be comfortable using cameras conforming to the Genicam standard. The basic idea in an XML file is that information is enclosed within tags. A tag identifies the information. For example, it might identify that it is the camera's gain. After the tag, there is the relevant information. The same tag, but with a slash, ends the information. The Genicam standard has seven mandatory tags and 180 predefined tags. The camera description file in all Genicam compliant cameras must have all seven mandatory tags. The camera only needs to have the remainder of the 180 tags that apply to the specific camera and its features. It is also possible for the camera manufacturer to add custom tags as they introduce new features. However, standard software packages may not recognize these special tags without some supplementary programming. What the cameras can describe include the name of the parameter, whether it's read-only, write-only, or read-write, the register address in the camera to read or write, the type of data such as integer, floating point, binary switch, selection from a list, the maximum and minimum data values allowed, and more. Here is the takeaway for Genicam. As a user of cameras and software, Genicam ensures that you get access to all your camera features 
and your camera and software can operate together without any special program or any special file external from the camera. You'll see in the videos that follow that most of the current digital camera interfaces rely on Genicam as part of their standard.